All right, so um, so in a hierarchical model, we know that we're going to start to uh, give same higher distribution for some subsets of the variable of, of, of parameters. And uh, in this case, we uh, we are doing a two stage prior. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. But then, of course, if you have more levels of the data, then you can have multiple stages of the prior. It depends how, how things work out. But for us right now, it's going to be a two stage. So um, quick review, now this is still using uh, YI to label. And this was from before. And here is assuming that mu and sigma both are known. Okay. So let me just get you the results directly. We um, put independent prior for mu and sigma. And for mu is a normal prior, uh, mu zero and sigma zero. For sigma, it's um, inverse gamma, or I should say one over sigma, the position is a gamma distribution with um, alpha and beta. And we knew that when we were doing this back then, we will use a keep sampler to um, proceed in order to get posterior drops for both parameters. Okay. And the way that we did it is you have to, first of all, write out the joint posterior distribution of the two parameters, and then collect the terms say for mu, so you only collect terms for mu, you're conditioning on phi, then you come up with a normal full conditional posterior distribution. And then similarly, you do that for phi, and you assume that mu is given, and of course the data is given, and then you came to a gamma full conditional posterior distribution, and then you sample this iteratively. Okay. This is what we know so far. So now, if we're gonna have a group specific normal model or schedule specific. So let's start with this for now. I mean, this right now doesn't look so different from what we have earlier, right? Like if you treat every uh, group separately, as soon as let's see how we can share searching information across the mu j's and across the sigma j. So again, n j is the number of observations in group j, and you have capital J number of groups. So if you're gonna do the separate estimates, we're gonna put, I mean, not the link, just separate. You're gonna give a normal prior for mu j, a gamma prior, okay. It should be a gamma prior for one over sigma j squared, sorry about that. And then you do independently, and then you're just gonna use Gibbs sampler separately. So everything is separate, okay? And that was what we just did um, before, like the review that I did. So how to link that if we believe they're related? So let me just start simple. Let's just work with the mu for now. Let's assume sigma is the same, but it's random. We still assume it's random, and we're gonna put a prior for that. And we're gonna, you can do both, of course, but just focus on the mu for now so we can dig into more about the assumptions that we're gonna be making when you're trying to uh, using, like when you're trying to use hierarchical prior here. So first of all, I put a, I mean, I said that just to start simple, but I still want to want you to think about it, whether it makes sense to, to have, a, have the same sigma. So what does it mean to have the same sigma across the four models? There's a similar variability in like the model readings. Mm -hmm. So it's like in the data, I mean, in the plot, which is probably not true, remember, because we saw like uh, schedule three is so tight, whereas the other three, I think, are more spread it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can look at the plot. You can also look at, I mean, the table. So I put the table here. If you look at the sample standard deviation, yeah, so, um, I mean, you can probably still argue schedule one, two, four are similar enough that you want to put the same one. But again, schedule three, as we saw earlier, in the um, in the plot as well might not be uh, the best choice, but just keep in mind we probably want to change the model later. But for now, uh, we're going to use the same sigma and then focus on the mu. Later, you can do a more uh, like flex model. Over there. Okay. okay, so that's why I mean you can use that. Like we're going to do it as an exercise later. But for now, let's start with equation nine. Okay, so now we know hierarchical model typically is done, at least based on the ones that we know so far, is to specify 
a shared normal prior distribution for mu j. So I write it in equation 11 for you. So, because, let's see, if we do it separately, what we do is mu j, for example, follows a normal distribution with mu j0 and tau j0, right? If we're going to do it one for one separate. Right now, I'm using the same prior. That's what we mean by shared normal prior distribution for mu j. And um, we put a normal now according, I mean, because of conjugacy, it's probably easier to work with. So what does this prior mean? What do you think it means? Like we just, it's easy to do it, just write it down, and then we say that we are sharing it. But what is the ultimate uh, assumption that we're making when you're sharing this prior? I'm going to give you a few minutes to, to think about it and talk to your neighbors really quick. But, I mean, it's a normal distribution, so we still know about the behavior. So link to what you know already. So what do you think? We give the same prior for different mu. Mu are the each mu is the mean that we give for a particular group or schedule in this case. What do you think it means? Or I should say, what do you think that we think the mu j behaves? How do we think they're behaving? If they come from the same distribution. Christian? So um, what that's doing is basically it puts like a constraint on the kinds of mu, uh, mu j's you can get. Uh, mm -hmm. So for example, in like the video that Josh did, uh, what, the, what the constraint that he put was like all his values should have been positive because he was doing positive uh, response time key presses. So what that, what the mu j distribution coming from a normal with mu and tau expresses is there's like some constraint on like the kinds of values you can get for mu j. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually good point. So constraint and now you mentioned it, I think. So ratings should be positive, right? And we're not dealing with that. We at least I totally ignore it, but we should have um, made sure that um, let's see. So ratings, which are the yij, so they should be positive, and the means, which is what we're working with now, which is mu j, they should be positive as well, right? So well, if we just keep a normal distribution, we might not be able to satisfy that. Um, but one thing you can do is give a large value for mu. I mean, not super large. I mean, still between zero and one, and give a small tau. Oh. Right. But of course, I mean, there are other more advanced ways that you can guarantee that, uh, like the yij's in equation ten, as well as um, mu j in equation eleven, can be like strictly positive. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's a good point, and um, we should keep that in mind. Okay. Anything else? Specifically, we give a normal distribution. What does that mean for all of the mu j's? There are four mu j's in this case. What do you think we're assuming that the mu j's are behaving? They're continuous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're continuous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe let me go a little bit more specific. What do you think the mu, which is in the normal density, and that's the mean, and also tau, which is the standard deviation that we put, what do they represent? Because at the end of the day, you can give normal prior in this way, but we still need to figure out what you put for mu and tau, right? Yes, okay. Um, we're assuming by using a normal, I think that um, mu j is equally likely to be greater than or less than mu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what normal distribution means, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. So it can be. So it's centered around. Maybe let's put it that way. It's centered around the mu that we put, right? So that can give us some idea as later how do you want to put, like, what do you want to give value for? So from now on, you will see that we can keep assuming mu and tau, they're random. We can do that. I mean, that's just 
more parameters, et cetera, et cetera, in the model. But you can also just give fixed values from you and tau. Okay? That's going to be simpler. But if you're going to go with that route, what kind of values should I give from you and tau? Okay, so that I think hopefully you can start think about what does I mean what do mu and tau indicate in this case? So Gabe was saying that because mu j's all follow the same normal distribution, so all of the mu j's gonna be centered around mu. Okay? And that mu, well we can we can go back really quick if you think about the mean for the data sample here. Well we do see differences actually if you look at the mean uh, column. Right, send a Saturday on Sundays. Uh, schedule four seems to be having the highest, right? But the thing is, when you look at the difference, like in the column of mean, they're different, but it's still reasonable if you think about it. It's still possible that they come from the same normal distribution. Just look at the sample mean, right? I mean, because a normal distribution is a range of value, okay? And we see as low as 0.0384 as high as close to 0.2, right? So from here, I mean, again, this is sample. We probably like, I mean, we are working with mu, which is the unknown parameter. So, but still looking at the sample, he give us some idea as how to put the values for mu and tau if we're gonna get fixed value of tau. And I'm trying to say that if you look at the mean column, we see some variability. And if you think the variability is large enough, say, oh, ranging from 0.04 to 0.2, then what you can do is to give a not so small tau. Because what does tau do? Tau is the standard deviation for this prior. Okay? And by giving, so again, what Cushing said earlier was totally correct. We also have to make sure that it's not negative. But like, uh, ignore that for now. Just think about using different values of tau, what does it mean? So if you think mu j, I mean, first of all, all of the mu j's come from the same normal, and we give the same mu, I mean, a fixed mu here, so we're just saying that the mu j's. Uh, probably. No, I, I might, yeah, I, I think I just think okay. anyway. Let's see. Should be, this is awkward. Right. Um, what was I saying? Large tau. Oh, large tau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tau. Okay. So okay. Yes, we are assuming that mu j's come from the same normal distribution, and then when we give the value of mu, we're saying that all the mu j is going to be centered around that mu. Okay. And then tau is trying to help us to control how variable we think the mu j is gonna be, okay? Earlier I was saying that if we go back to here, that we have mean 0 0.07, 0 0.1-ish, 0 0.04, 0 0.2, then there's enough variability, so you might want to give a larger tau. Or if the data tells you that they're still very similar to each other, you might give a small tau. And per what um, Cushion said earlier, small tau can actually, I think, can help us to make sure that it doesn't go below zero, which should be an important aspect of uh, this kind of analysis. Okay, yeah. So, um, right, so that's what I'm hoping to discuss about. First of all, we assume all of the new J's come from the same prior. So they're related, but they're not the same. It's just they come from the same distribution. Okay, so that's very important to keep in mind. It's not that you're assuming all of the mu j's are the same, it's we're assuming the mu j's come from the same distribution. So mu is the mean, controls the location of where the mu j is gonna be. Tau is the standard deviation, so it controls the spread. Like we said earlier, large tau means larger or large variability among the mu j's. Okay, and the third point here, we talked about that on Tuesday a little bit as well, so mu and tau, they are now called hyperparameters because they are parameters of distributions of parameters. So let's just sort it out like clearly. Y, i, j, they're the data. They are the random variable, okay? So in equation 10, that's what we have for our data model. 
and we have a group specific mean mu j and a shared common a commonly shared sigma standard deviation. Okay. So these are parameters mu j and sigma. Okay. And then now we go one step lower and we put a normal prior for the unknown parameter mu j and the normal prior has its own parameters mu and tau. So now mu and tau they are parameters of prior distributions of parameters. Okay. So that's why we call them uh, hyperparameters. And of course, if you want to keep, keep going, I want to also make inference about mu and tau, you can put prior distributions on them. And that's the time that we're gonna start to call those priors as hyperpriors. Okay. But alternatively, you can give them fixed number, and that's fine as well. It depends on how flexible you want the model to be. So I, I typically think about it from the higher level of the, I mean, the highest level is the data model, and then you go step by step further down. All right, so if we try to start thinking about how to give the prior, I put it as a stage one prior now uh, for mu j. So mu j is what we saw so far is normal mu and tau. And then if you further, like I said, want to give prior distribution for mu and tau, I'm using it very generically right now. I'm using g mu tau here. And this can be the second stage prior. Like I said, you can stop at equation 13, give fixed numbers uh, for mu and tau. But you also, I mean, on the other hand, you might want to let them to be random especially thinking about the value of tau because tau is essentially telling you how different the means of each group will be, right? If you give it a fixed number, well, there's nothing to be, I mean, there's no inference to be to made about. You just assume it's a fixed number. Okay. Whereas if you put it as a random parameter, in this case, a random hyperparameter, then if you later on in the end uh, doing posterior summary, then it can tell you something about tau. And then tau is essentially telling you how variable those mu j's are. So it will be an interesting quantity to make inference about, and that I think gives us incentive to why we want to put a prior, or hyper prior, I should say, on that. Make sense? All right. And don't forget the sigma, that's also random, and the sigma now is in the data model, okay? So tau, so just pay attention, just so many normals going on, and you need to make sure that you know what is for what. And um, so I'm using the notation of, say, um, the prior distribution for sigma, which is the standard deviation that we have in the data model, it's commonly shared across the different groups. I'm giving it as a the precision, giving a gamma, and I'm just using a subscript of alpha, yeah, oh, sorry, alpha sigma and beta sigma. Because okay. later you're gonna see that I'm gonna try to play the same thing with tau. And then I have to be just like bookkeeping, it's tedious, but it's, it's worth doing because otherwise you might get confused later. Okay, so now you see, we have the data model as in equation 12, involves a group specific mean mu j and a commonly shared standard deviation sigma. So naturally we need to give prior for mu j and we're doing it in a hierarchical way. We're putting a two stage prior. Okay, for sigma we're doing the simpler format for now and sigma now we assume it's shared across the different groups so we only need to give one prior for it which we are doing it in the conjugate uh, setting. Okay, we're doing it through one over sigma squared to be a gamma distribution. Okay, so now this completes, I mean, say at least at the level of thinking about the prior, it's complete, okay? But of course, how to deal with the equation 14? Well, if you want to further put, make sure that you want to let mu and tau both be random, then this is next what you should do to complete the entire um, model. All right, so this is um, 
one way to represent how the hierarchical model is like. So this is usually like, I mean, I was trained in this way, so I typically draw it in this way, but I notice you probably notice as well, say in Josh's video and then in a lot of, I think, neuroscience, psychology, that area of doing Bayesian analysis, they do um, graphical models like doing little circles and then boxes and that's pretty neat too. I just, it's just much harder to get them in working in LaTeX, so I gave up doing it. I'm just going to do whatever I'm more um, comfortable with. But overall, it still, I think, represents the structure of the model. So let's just look at the graph uh, in detail. So you see that we, so I took, so yeah, I think if I'm going to draw, like, draw it on, on a piece of paper, I will start with the third row because that's the data model. Right, so I have the yij, so I can write on the left that yij is normally distributed with mu j and sigma, and then on the right, I can have those curly brackets just to show that I have a bunch of um, observations in group one, bunch in group two, da da da, bunch of group j. Okay. So then we can complete the upper part here first, because that's the part that we're doing hierarchically. So first of all, we know that each group has a group-specific mu. So we have mu1, mu2, da, 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 mu j. Okay? And we're using the arrow pointing from the parameter to the model. Okay? So that's, uh, I forgot I have this. Again, that's why we have all of this going on here. And then further up, that's the part that we put the hyperprior. Or like where, I should say, where the hyperparameter goes. Okay. And now it's not like multiple arrows like from each separate because we're sharing them together. That's why at the top you can write mu and tau. And then they are shared among all of the mu j's. So the arrow the arrows go from mu and tau to different mu j to represent that we're sharing that part. Okay. And then at the bottom, we are sharing sigma to start with. We didn't even do anything about like sigma j, for example. And then um, we are sh assuming that they're the same. So we put sigma at the bottom and then the arrows go from um, sigma to different sigma uh, yij. So usually arrows uh, pointing from parameters to random variables or from hyperparameters to, to parameters. Okay? Yeah. So all of them, I mean, mu1, mu2, until mu j, sigma, there are still parameters and mu and tau, they are hyperparameters. So before we move on, I just want you to think one more time. So we are sharing things in different ways right now. Sigma is being shared in the data model, right? Whereas the mu j's are being shared in the first stage of the prior. Okay? So we've been discussing earlier, what does it mean to share the mu j's? Use, I mean, having the same prior distribution for all of mu j, what does that sharing mean? And just keep in mind that the way we're sharing sigma is different, okay? We're not doing a hierarchical way. We're just saying all of the observations from its own mean shares the same standard deviation, okay? So we've been talking about sharing, but it's different type of sharing, so I think it's important to keep in mind what do they mean. Okay? And sometimes you might want to do one over the other. Like I said earlier, we're making the simpler assumption here of using the same sigma, but just by looking at the data, that might not be a good way to do it. We make the assumption, so you might want to um, relax the assumption and then let different sigma j as well. So that's something to keep in mind in the future. Okay. All right. So graphical representation, I think it's useful to get it clear about what the um, model is like.
So ultimately, we have stage one, mu j equals to normal, mu tau, stage two, and uh, I mean stage two now, generically is g uh, mu tau, and the hyperprior is one way to put it, not surprisingly, is doing a normal and gamma and doing them independently. Okay. So here, equation 18 is giving the hyperprior distribution for the hyperparameter mu. And we're using right now a normal center m mu zero and with standard deviation gamma zero. And then for tau, um, independently we give an inverse gamma, I should say a one over tau square, the precision of it. We give a gamma distribution and then we're using a subscript of alpha tau and beta tau just to differentiate because don't forget we have the sigma and that's also a gamma. I mean, one over sigma squared is also gamma distribution. So um, just be careful. It's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. And then lastly, don't forget about that one over sigma squared. So I think this now finally completes the entire um, prior specification of a hierarchical model like this. Okay. Questions? Looks good. Okay. Okay. All right. So we do have time to, to get to that part. That's good.